we're going to get started, first of all, with starting with engineered floor systems. I always look for the old guy in the audience, you know, some guy that's been around a long time. To, yeah, he's right pointing to, you're not that old. How, come on, how old are you? Anybody been in this business for, say, more than 30 or 40 years? 30 or 40 years, do you remember the first time you used engineered lumber? You don't, you don't remember that? You can't remember how long ago. But when you first got that delivery of eye joists and you looked at this thing and you said, you gotta be kidding me. You know, how far have they gone now? They're taking dimensional lumber and they're turning it into this little skinny OSB sheet in between two pieces of wood. And I really doubted the performance of it the first time I had to work with it, probably close to 20 years ago. So well, how in the world is this going to perform? How is this going to work? Because I was used to working with dimensional lumber. Now, one of the bigger jobs that we had framed years ago was a family room kitchen where we had to do a clear span of 24 feet. And it was a second floor bedrooms and uh, living space up above. And in order to span 24 feet before we had the engineer lumber, we had to use quite a bit of material. And what we used were uh, three by 12s. There were three by 12 dimensional lumber that were 12 inches on center. That was a lot of lumber. But if you take the engineered book now and you look at some of the spans that you can do with an eye joist with this engineered lumber, you'd be quite surprised. I have the, um, this is the eye level catalog. I just highlighted a couple of points here. And what we're going to do is explain a couple of things first before we get into the engineered system that we need to know as carpenters. But just to look at the span chart, there's two span charts listed here. There's what's called L over 360 and L over 480. Now, if you're not familiar with what L over 360 or L over 480 is, that's the length divided by 360. And that would be the length in inches is going to give you a fractional value. So if you take, say, 14 feet, and you convert that to inches. So we'll do that. I'll take 14 feet, 168 inches, and you divide that by 360, you get a fractional value of 7 16 That means that given a floor load, if this is 14 feet, the maximum deflection for that floor allowable is 7 16 of an inch. So to you and I, it gives us an idea of how stiff the floor is. What does the floor feel like when you walk on it? How far can you span and what kind of movement are you going to get? And when you look at this chart, you have the 480. Now, obviously, if you divide that by a higher number, the fractional value is going to be even lower. So it's going to be a stiffer floor. There's less deflection. Here's the thing that we need to understand. Tom, could you give me a hand and let's get our little model up here. Let's put it right up on the front here. We want to show you what we're talking about when we talk about deflection. No, put it on the back, Tom. Just let's go to the back here. Which I want you to imagine for a minute that these are two eye joists that currently are, don't have any load on them. So I've got two eye joists that don't have a load on them. What I'm looking at is when I apply a weight to it, how much is it going to deflect? So what I'm going to do first off is I'm going to take my circular saw and I'm going to just clamp it onto that, right? And you notice that the what happens is that our lumber bends, and that's what we call deflection. But here's the real problem for you and I as a contractor, that the L over 360 and the L over 480, those are good numbers as a gauge. But what happens when you're framing a floor system that has different lengths of lumber? What we have here is it's sort of got a dog leg or an L shape to it. And what happens here is we've got our floor joists that are running, Let's just say these are 12 foot and these are 14 foot. So I have 12 foot and I have 14 foot lengths. When you get a set of prints and you're looking at your prints and you say, all right, I need to order some 14 footers, I need to order some 12 footers. What ends up happening is when you change the distance of the span of these four joists, does the L over 360 or the L over 480 change? Not really. What changes is the performance or the stiffness of the floor. Tom, can I get that block for that? It should be about 14 inches long. Just give me a 14 inch block. I had one up here, it's disappeared. And what I want to illustrate to you is what happens when you change the span of a floor without changing anything else. Tom's going to give me a 14 inch block. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a partition wall. Let me see if I can get this out front. It might be a little bit easier for you to see. 
hang my saw on this one. So you can see the comparison in the deflection of the unit here. Take a square, come across the top of that. Notice the amount of deflection that this weight is giving us. Now if I change the span of this floor by putting a partition wall underneath it, watch what happens to my deflection. See how it's been raised up? We've shortened the length here. This is a common problem that contractors get into every day of the week. You look at your floor plan and you're rolling a series of eye joists. Let's just say you're doing 16 inches on center in the 360 series. And you notice that the plan says every 16 inches is a 360 and they go from 12 foot to 14 foot. What's going to happen to this floor? What is it going to feel like when you walk on it? When you change the span of the floor. Well, when the customer walks across this one, it's going to have a little bit of bounce. But when they walk across this one, it's going to feel stiffer. And at that transition point between the 12 foot and the 14 foot is where you're going to feel it. You frame the whole job, you got all your flooring down, and then the customer comes in after you've got the flooring in and they say, hey, what's going on here? This feels funny. That's what performance rating is. So don't just look at that L over 360 or that L over 480 chart. What you want to look at is the floor performance rating. So what you'll see now is that you're going to have a change. You're going to go from, maybe your series of eye joists will change. You'll go to the next higher level of eye joists. Or maybe your on-center spacing is going to change. A good architect and a good engineer will pick this up. But if it's not picked up on your plan, that's a recipe for disaster. Make sure that you performance rate your floors. Because if you don't, you're going to get callbacks and you're going to have issues. Working with engineered lumber is completely different than working with dimensional lumber. And we're going to go through a number of processes that we have to think about when we do that. So keep in mind the difference in the deflection when you change the length of your span. That's what's going to happen. This is the long section of floor, and that's going to be the short section. And you can see the difference in stiffness just on a really small section of change here. So keep that in mind when you're doing that. Look at the construction of the eye joints. If we're going to take a dimensional piece of lumber, let me grab that two by four there, do a comparison. If this were, a, say, a two by 10, and this is a, a 10 inch eye joist, and you look at the amount of lumber that's in here, just imagine for a minute that you took your pickup truck and we could cut four 12 inch long pieces of this and park your truck on top of it and balance it. What would happen after about six or eight months? Well, eventually, the amount of pressure that's put on this center web here, it would start to buckle it. It doesn't have enough stiffness. Whereas the two by 12 or the two by 10, it's got enough meat and it's solid enough that it would, the worst that would happen is it maybe shrink an eighth of an inch or so. That's about that. all that's gonna happen in six months. But this would eventually start to buckle because it doesn't have that much core material here. And as it buckles, it will eventually fail. So what is the difference then between engineered lumber and in the form of an eye joist in solid material is that the way it performs under a load is completely different. And if we don't understand how that works, we're gonna have problems. And that's where it comes when we start to lay out our engineered lumber, we have to really think about what we're doing.